So we must do two things, two great things together to encompass that enormous new view that lies before us, but to encompass it within the framework of science, to see it within the whole categorical framework of science, and to see that these two are not separate, but that they are wedded. The bigness of the idea, the newness of the idea, the greatness of it is one with the structure of science, the structure of being itself. So Christ Jesus becomes the symbol in the 5,000 year period, the symbol for reality. And with Christ Jesus, um, and with the doctrine of the Christ as Paul presented it, as Paul presents in his letters the doctrine of the Christ, of what the Christ is, and shows that Christianity is brought about by basing oneself on the true doctrine of the Christ that Jesus exemplified, we see that Christianity comes in. So the period of the 5,000 year, fifth years uh, and with Jesus and everything that happened in that 5,000 year period is mainly on Christianity. It shows us how we get Christianity, and it's through the individual, individualized Christ consciousness. And so Paul really set the scene, as did all of the apostles. Uh, when I say Paul, I really should say the um, the, uh, the epistle matrix set the scene, the matrix, all of the standpoints of the letters of the apostles, together with St. John, St. John's revelation and his three letters, set the scene for something new to come in. And that which was new was the 6,000 year period. Where Mary Baker Eddy could show us, give us, uh, attend the birth of the second coming of the Christ. Namely, as the Christ science. So it's the Christ science in the 6,000 year period that becomes the symbol of reality and it is the reality. With the 5th, 6th, and 7,000 year periods, you get the oneness of symbol and reality. Jesus was the Christ. Now, the question is, that was individual. How can that be rendered collective and universal? <clears throat> Only on the basis of science, that the Christ consciousness be seen in its science. The moment it is stated in its science, it becomes available to everyone, accessible to everyone. And so she presented in the Christian Science textbook the language of the Christ science. The textbook is the language of the Christ science, and it is the Christ science. And it is a language there of scientific metaphysics, a language of ideas. Metaphysics meaning, scientific metaphysics meaning ideas, 
that are scientifically rooted and found in their scientific categories. And here and there through that text, which is mainly uncapitalized terms of scientific metaphysics, of ideas, of the presentation of ideas through uncapitalized terms, we find sprinkled through that text capitalized terms hinting to another language coming in. The textbook appears at the close of the 6,000 year period, very close to the 7,000 year period, and it presents us mainly with the language of the 6,000 year period, but as held in this language of the 7,000 year period, because the capitalized terms are the language of the 7,000 year period. And so uh, she gives us a way, science, the Christ science gives us a way to be able to evolve to the seventh. It gives us a hint to what the seventh is by placing in the surface text those capitalized terms and making us ask, what, what do they mean? What does she mean with mind, capital M? What does she mean with spirit, soul, principle, life, truth, and love? All capitalized. And really sets a scene for us to be able to go to the text that we've been given, which we only see as a surface text at this point, and to ask the surface of the text what mind is, what spirit is, what soul is, what principle, life, truth, and love are, what is the Word, what is the Christ, what is Christianity, what is science. And that was what John Dorley did. He asked that of the text and so was able to find through all of those references that have mind in them to find out what, it, what mind is through its ideas, you see, through scientific metaphysics, through the uncapitalized text, he found out what the capitalized terms were. Is that clear? And in that little, little band, that little working band of individuals of seven or eight or ten individuals in, in England working in the late 30s of this century, that work was done. Max Kepler was a member of that group, Peggy Brook was a member of that group, uh, and there were other individuals, uh, all taking up this question of what the capitalized terms were. And the the work, the approach to the textbook was absolutely scientific. It wasn't, what do I think the capitalized terms mean? What do I think Mrs. Eddy means by the capitalized term mind? What do I feel? What is my feel, my emotional feel of it? But by taking those steps, those criteria, is it criteria or criterion, plural? The criteria the, is the plural. Taking those criteria that were scientific and that uh, described how to approach the text and ask the right questions, they did that work. And not with a human feel, a human subjective uh, sense, but with a scientific sense. And so in doing that, began to 
differentiate, to find the differentiation within the capitalized terms and within the textbook itself. That what began to happen then was that the tonality of these 15 root notions began to form within consciousness. So that they had a consciousness of the seven synonymous terms, the four operations, and the four levels of being, and went continually back to the text. <laughs> Makes me reminds me of what Mrs. Eddy says in the 16th chapter. She says, read this book from beginning to end. Wouldn't you think she'd put that on page one? Huh? <laughs> read this book from beginning to end. Study it, ponder it. Uh, she says, it, why does she say it at the end? It's like saying, go back and read it again. <laughs> Here it's cybernetic. You come to the, you begin, you read all 16 chapters, you come to the end and it says, read this book from beginning to end. So you go back and you read it again and you just keep going back and back and back because every time you get to the end, to science is science, uh, it, it says, don't leave this field. Don't leave the realm of the textbook. Go back. But every time you go back, you go back from a higher standpoint of what the calculus has worked out in you, as the calculus has been working on you every time you go through it. And so every time they, as they went back to the textbook, they began to see something more, something deeper about the textbook. And this was how Max Kepler, John Dorley first, and then Max Kepler, because John Dorley uh, began to discern that there were 16 distinct chapters laid out in the calculus, and began to analyze the text of the chapters and started that work, and then left us in 1950. And Max Kepler took up that work and made it his life work to find the structure of the textbook. They began to see that there was a deep structure to the surface text, that the surface text was at the surface, but something deeper was making that surface text appear. What makes the surface text appear? It's the deep structure, reality of the capitalized terms. And so, in a very great way, they had already touched the, a 7,000 year period state of consciousness, which is a consciousness of the capitalized terms. It's the consciousness of divine science. The 7,000 year period. A consciousness of the capitalized terms that isn't just a consciousness that says a term and that that term is empty and it doesn't have meaning, but a consciousness that when we say mind, it is filled with the fullness of mind. All that mind is all that mind is as it reflects all of the other standpoints. What mind is as spirit, as soul, as principle, as life, as truth, as love. What mind is as the word, as the Christ, as Christianity, as science. What mind is on the level of Christian science, absolute Christian science, divine science, and science itself. That every synonymous term was is seen in its fullness, to have a consciousness of that is the consciousness, the millennium consciousness. 
the consciousness of the 7,000 year period. And so we see that we are being led into that consciousness. Isn't that true? Don't you feel quite different than when you arrived, when we all arrived together here before we started on our way, looking at the seven, looking at the four, considering the levels of being, that to some degree, some small measure, we have that consciousness now. And this consciousness is really leading the universe, blessing the universe. Uh, it's changing the universe, changing the whole field of, the, of universal consciousness. Because we are right one with the dynamic movement of the Word. The Word of God through the seven. And I think that was a marvelous question, Dave. Thank you. Marvelous answer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Dave, what would I do without you? Because you have what reminded me of the... <laughs> The, the great point that this is the um, what the model of being represents the seven thousand year period consciousness. It's a model of capitalized terms. You don't see any text there, any words there, any explanation there. But they, those capitalized terms have been explained, have made themselves explicate through the previous thousand year periods, states and stages of consciousness. So we, we will come to that consciousness of the model of being, the capitalized terms for God, uh, in which implicate within which are all other languages. Every other language from the previous thousand year periods is implicate within, implied within the capitalized terms as we see them in the model of being. Okay, well, I think maybe we could stop at that point. Thank <laughs> you.